What is going on today guys? This is Tony from Team Divine Pro here coming at you guys with a new deck profile and today it will be on, oh gosh, camera's moving a bit. Okay, it will be on uh, Revengers. So, yeah, uh, I didn't have enough time to sleeve them, but they will be in this sleeve, so just imagine it if they were in this sleeve. But yeah, they're going to be in that sleeve, guys. Just thought you might want to know, but yeah. Um, Revengers, um, yeah, I, I kind of promised this a while ago, but I haven't gone really around time to get all the stuff I need, and I still don't, so there's going to be stuff that is pro there's going to be stuff that I'll have to tell you, so you will have to listen to the audio and not just look at the video, so that's one thing that I'm probably going to put a disclaimer about. But yeah, so I have most cards, like literally just 10 cards are missing, so that's not too big of a deal, I find. So we're running for great for our starters, Judge Bow. Now his ability is that he can, you can, when you boost in your attack hits with a Mordred, uh, no, with a Phantom uh, Vanguard, you can counter blast one and superior call two Shadow Paladin, rearguards, um, and I believe in rest. So it's a really good card for giving out fodder to uh, multiple cards like uh, Raging Form, but I do not play that. But like uh, Phantom Bluster Abyss here, so you know. Like that, so their starter. Uh, I can. I think I have enough room. So then I play. I play technically four. So let me just get some cards out. So you run technically four Phantom Bluster Dragon Abyss. So he runs really well with Judge Bow and the fact that. He is a phantom card, and also his ability is now, he's 11k, so his ability is that you can, when he's in legion, you can counter blast 2, and regardless if the attack to the vanguard hit or not, you can counter blast 2, retire 3 uh, revenger rearguards, and stand this card. It can only, this effect can only be activated once this turn. So it's really powerful, it hits for 20k, but it's really uh, limited to the fact that it has to activate when you activate legion, so you have to know when to legion properly, which is a big thing about this deck you have to know when you can legion when you shouldn't legion or not it's kind of like the spectral duke thing where um you have to know and you can't just randomly push willy-nilly so that's something and yeah so it's it's still really good though so i run four because you'll see in a second but um four is probably the best number because you do want to see this card even if you don't get um the break a break right off or anything it's still really good as an 11k body and the 20k attack is still very powerful And then we run four Mordred Phantoms. Uh, he's just a basic, everybody should know him by now, but if you break ride, if you're at limit break four, you ride on top of him, you break ride, and then you can counter blast one, superior call one, uh, Shadow Paladin, rear guard, with, um, grade two or lower, I think. And he they gain plus 5,000, and this gains 10,000. So it's a really powerful card, and the reason behind why I'm not running um, another, the other Legion or... Why I'm not running Raging Form is because uh, the game now is that we're at a game state where it's either you rush your opponent to death and you try to win, or you play conservatively and you kind you just rely on hitting big numbers so that you remove the hand advantage that has been like put in place by through this game. And really, the deck is like the game is shifting more towards a control based format. So playing four Mordred Phantoms is a lot smarter in my opinion. And on top of that, it's just I find that it's better than having, because then you have the, like, with a Raging Form, you have the chance, of course, of superior, like, a Persona, like, Persona riding and everything, but with Mordred Phantom, you have also the chance of getting pluses easier than you do with Raging Form, because then you don't rely on the fact that you have to get another copy. So that's grade threes. You technically run eight, but, you know, but grade twos, we have all of them, so we run 11, so we have... One SP Blaster Dark of uh, Blaster Dark Abyss and three normal ones. So SP. So what his ability is is that when he's called to rearguard, you can counter blast one and retire one of your opponent's front row rearguards. So it's really powerful and it's just all in all good. And I guess I'll show you the Legion. Yeah, okay. So it's just all around good. <laughs> I don't know what to say about this card. It's just like it's not as good as the previous versions of like Blaster Blade or something like Berserk Dragon, where it can retire anything, but it's still very good. Next up, we run four of its counterpart, fan, um, Blaster Dark Revenger. So his ability is that when he's placed a Vanguard or Rearguard, you can counterblast two and retire one of your opponent's rearguards. 
if I'm correct, it might be just front row. I don't know exactly, but I know that he does retire. And he's just there because we do play the Dorant combo, because the deck is very counter blast heavy, which is why you need the Dorants just purely for the- it's they're, they're purely in here for the counter blast, but you also have the possibility of using the effect, which is still very powerful in its own essence. Now, I believe that he is anywhere, and then he is um, specifically front row. So then you have something to remove the back row, if that's the case. In a round off, we have three uh, Rev Makart. So he's the new card from the new set with him. The, his ability is that when your Vanguard performs Legion, so this card has to be on the field when he performs Legion to activate his ability. Superior, call one Revenger from your um, deck and call it in rest. Now, the reason why I play this card over, say, Tartu or even Mana is because of the fact that, one, he's the 9k body, so you, he can swing for numbers without having something to boost him. And on top of that, 8k is just kind of weak, and the card returns to the bottom of the deck afterwards. Whereas with this card, this it stays, so even though you're swinging for a low number first turn, you could also potentially get... You could swing for a higher number next turn because you could potentially keep it on the board. And Tartu is just because the deck is so counter blast heavy, I don't think you can afford to pay that much counter blast. So it's really just really good, and it's a free, um, free uh, superior call. Um, going to grade ones, we run we have uh, fourteen, so we run four uh, transient revenger masquerade. So ten k attacker. Um, not really much to say. Um, I was thinking about running like some of these or Rukia, which is the other card that if you, for as many as you retire, it gains plus 2000. But the fact is that this card is more stable in that it's not situational as, as to a point. And the chances are for Rukia is that if you were to retire three, most likely you're going to have to retire the Rukia. So it's not going to be worth, worth your while to have to use it where you could have had a 10k attacker and simply attack for that because the deck the deck it really d does eat through a lot of some of your rear guards so having 10k attacks is very viable and the reason why i don't like run one of these or one of these is because this one it's not a revenger and i want to keep my non-revenger number down to a very minimum even though i do know that this card's very good i still want to keep it to a minimum because i can only call it out with this from the deck or i can only just draw it but i can't kill it with this so it it pretty much stays there until i swap it out which kind of becomes a negative at a point. And then him, I was thinking about, but it's just the fact that I have to have a grade three in hand to begin with. And having him in hand and riding first is not as big, is not a big deal because it's still very good. And I, it's just a situational card. And I feel that even if I were running at one, I would still probably need two. And I don't have the room in the deck to do that. Next up, we would run uh, four, <laughs> another proxy card, uh, four of the Dorants. So, Four of the Blaster Blade combo card. Now, the only reason that I don't have it is because it's kind of out of stock, and when I was trying to, it, just a lot of stuff, guys. But yeah, it's just there purely for the uh, Counter Blast ability in 7k, and it's really good still. And it does not activate with this card. It has to be specifically this card, guys. I learned that, just putting that out there. And it's just very good, and lets you set up for good plays, and it gives you the Counter Blast needed for other stuff. Next up, we do have these two cards. We have two um, Blackwing Swordbreaker. Okay, I'll put that out of the glare. Blackwing Swordbreaker is a card that was released in the BT-15. Uh, it's a Shadow Paladin, not a Revenger. So it's one, it's superior called from the deck. You can Soul Blast one and draw one card. So it's kind of like a Dindrain Joseph kind of clone. It's 6k, which is why I only run two. And on top of that, it's non-Revenger. But it's very, it's callable through Judge Bow and Mordred Phantom, which is still good. And it's just the fact that uh, you want to keep your numbers low but it still gives you the advantage and it's not too too big of a deal because chances are you'll probably move it up to the front or something or i don't know what exactly you'll do but you'll probably end up getting rid of it and it's not too big of a deal because this way you're at least keeping it to a minimum the numbers that you can draw and you won't hurt you too too much of drawing two because you'll be plussing off usually at least with one and it's that's good in my opinion and then for last two, we run four perfect guards, four, four perfect guards. I only have two of these. Um, you can run the other ones, but I think Revenger ones are the specific ones that you'd want because there is a chance that you might have to call them. And then rounding off, we run four heal, 
four crit, four more crit, so eight crit, and then four draws. Now I have seen people run um, 12 crit with the witch, tri witch critical, but um, I just found that card to be a bit, I just found running 12 crit to be a bit like um, too aggressive in a way because the deck does need hand advantage because you kill so much of your rear guard, so many of your rear guards, you retire so many of them that you do need hand advantage to stay in the game. But yeah, apart from that, it's the lineup is pretty standard. So yeah, guys, um, this has been my Phantom Blaster Abyss Phantom Mordred Phantom deck build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I do apologize for all the proxies, but uh, it's been something in the making, and I kind of want to get it out before the official set gets released, so that you guys have something to base off of, and you know some, so you know what to get in the stuff before prices go up. So yeah guys, hope you enjoyed and this has been Tony from Team Divine Pro. Comment, rate, like and subscribe if you do feel so inclined and until next time I will catch you guys later. Bye.